a welcome. I am the Moonshin King of the century. I just noticed my heart is inside out, which is very fitting to me. This is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, teaser trailer number one. This was released a couple of months ago now. <clears throat> And I wanted to do a reaction to it back then, but for some reason I did not. So now I have returned to the land of the living to complete my crime of the century. Uh, particularly because the second trailer has come out, unfortunately. So, <clears throat> I've not seen the second one, but I have actually seen this one uh, two months ago. Um, so I'm going to react to it now again and give my thoughts. So, three, two, one, go. Lucasfilm Limited. A desert again. I'm sick of deserts. We've seen it. We've seen a desert. Come up with something new. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. Uh Well, let's hope so, shall we? But this is your fight. Every generation has a legend. Isn't Skywalker still the legend of this generation? You know, I'm thinking about this scene, wondering maybe they're working together. Like she's jumping up, like she's giving her a lift somewhere. I don't know. They might not necessarily be fighting at that moment. That always baffled me, that part. He knocked him over with a lightsaber. Saga comes to an end. Um, we'll always be with you. I mean, no one's ever really gone. <laughs> Darkness <laughs> once more. Okay, Karazi team. Karazi. This film is not yet rated. Okay, okay, okay. As I said, I've seen that trailer before, so nothing there was surprising right now. But hearing Sidious's voice was the big reveal at the time. We'll get to that, hang on. So, they're in a desert. Again, as I was saying, I'm just sick of the desert. What? Is this Tatooine? Is this Jakku again? Where is this? Is this another desert planet? The Mandalorian seems to be set in a desert too. Um, at least partly. I just don't get the appeal every time. Um, what? What is the point having this fantastical science fiction fantasy world where you can go to different planets, different worlds and every every time you just see a desert or in Force Awakens, you know, Maz Kanata's castle some boring forest or woods, whatever it was, some jungle I mean okay, I'm, in terms of Rey's character seeing green for the first time, okay, but the planet itself was boring, the desert is boring. I mean, have them in the movie if you want, but then show us another planet that's spectacular and different and fantastical. These are alien planets and we're not seeing anything particularly alien. Um, and it's annoying, but... But... And the reason, I know the reason is because they want to film in the desert and film. Um, well, I think the uh, Maskanata scenes were filmed 
in uh, on oh maybe they weren't I, maybe they were filmed on set but I know the original movies of course they filmed uh, on on the uh, in the actual desert and it was very hot and they actually went there um, to shoot their scenes. But, and of course they didn't have the ability to do all of the um, necessarily um, fantastical sort of creations like Avatar or or even in the prequels. Um, there was, there was a, a place that was very colourful with big plants and crazy sort of um, environment in the prequel. We didn't see much of it but you know, we saw some different things. We saw that um, Coruscant, even Coruscant, just buildings and cars, but it still looked, still looked a different, well, different from what we've seen in Star Wars. I mean, flying cars, it looked like Blade Runner a bit, but not as gritty. It looked shiny and pristine, but you know what I'm saying? We're seeing different things. Here in the, in the sequence, what have we seen in terms of planets? Uh, sand planet. We've seen that. An icy sort of planet. Well, was it an icy... The problem was they copied the um, giant... Um, what are they called? 8080s. They made, uh, made them look a tiny bit different, but the whole scene was basically a rip-off of Empire. But uh, even that wasn't that exciting. I mean, it was a bit different because it had the red whatever it was, um, spitting out the ground, but it was still like, it was practically still a desert. Um, and Mad Kanata, that planet, which was just a green forest planet. What, what, what have we seen that's actually new uh, in terms of environment? Are they the only planet? Oh yes, the casino planet. <laughs> we won't talk about, uh, well, we won't talk about that, but at least it was different, at least it wasn't another desert. <laughs> anyway, anyway, as I was saying, um, maybe it looks like they're fighting here, but maybe they're working together. With the reveal of Sidious at the end, it got me thinking, maybe they're working together to bring him down, because we know Kylo is against the Jedi and the Sith. We said that in at the end of the last uh, movie, The Last Jedi. Uh, no more Sith, no more Jedi, something like that. He had enough of both sides, so it would make sense that he wouldn't want Sidious to return. Um, but maybe he would want him to return. It's all good and uh, well saying something, but this is the guy who trained Vader, so clearly he might have some nostalgic um, reminiscing he might want to be trained by the same person who trained his grandfather, his idol, his hero, the person he's looked up to and tried to replicate. So, yes, maybe they're working together to bring down a greater evil, or maybe they're fighting in this scene, or maybe... I don't know. Maybe they're working together to bring evil onto others. Maybe she's turned and... Ah, well, we'll get to that in the next trailer, but which I have not seen yet. So, still on the desert, still on the desert. Then we see some mountain and fog. Reminds me of Rogue One. Um, oh yes, this uh, was kind of odd, in the forest. Um, it... I think if you watch it in slow motion, he does actually cut the guy with his red lightsaber, but looking at it fast, it looks really odd how he's doing this. I, I don't really get it. He's using his lightsaber to pick someone off the ground and then splat them back down. But surely they would slice the very second the lightsaber touched the guy, so I don't know how that works. Um, unless he's using the force to pick him up, but... It's really odd to see um, someone just be picked up with the with the saber, which is supposed to cut you instantly. Uh, then we see him fixing his helmet again. 
Okay. And the more desert. Lando! Lando has returned just to be killed off, presumably. First movie was um, Han, second movie was Leia. Well, it wasn't Leia, but. But! It kind of was. Kind of was. They almost killed her off in the second one. And then it seems they're probably going to kill Lando. What? Hang on. Well, actually, I'm getting confused because he, he was actually announced to be in it long before the trailer. So that's what everyone was thinking. And before this trailer, there was a lot of confusion about Leia and whether she would be in this movie. Or everyone was saying, how are they going to kill her off? How are they going to kill her off? And I was always thinking, they don't necessarily need to kill her off. They could just say she's gone off to rebuild the Republic or set up a... You know, because she's sort of an ambassador of sorts. She was always always trying to warn the Republic to, to fight and to do something about the First Order. But they never listened for some reason. So... I always thought if I if it was up to me I would have just said in the credit in the opening credit sequence Leia has gone off to to rebuild the uh, the new republic or something along those lines so we won't we wouldn't see her in the movie but we know we would know she's doing something elsewhere which is also very important or maybe she's going to gather support and you know something along those lines um, she didn't get much support at the end of The Last Jedi, did she? <laughs> no one turned up, but... Yes, uh, I, I, there was a lot of confusion. Everyone just assumed she'd be killed off, um, off screen or something. Which I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, but here I hear... Well, I heard they, not, they weren't going to do CGI, and then I heard they were or something. Um, but this... From what I read, is reshoots from the last the Jedi, or is it from the Force Awakens? Um, she's dressed like the Force Awakens, so maybe it was a reshoot from there. Uh, it looks like when Rey was hugging Leia at the end of Force Awakens. So, um, but the, the surroundings looked kind of green screen in these shots. Um, but I'm guessing if. I'm guessing they might have changed the background because it does look fake <laughs> but maybe it's just because it's very blurry but um, if they did take the scene from The Force Awakens and put it in this movie then they probably should change the background even if it doesn't end up looking that great and then here they all are C-3PO, Chewbacca, bb oh yes they, they have a new droid a new random droid that just popped up. So now there's three droids. Uh, Ray, Poe and John Boyega. What's his character's name? Finn. They're all looking at the sea and the remains of the Death Star. What could they be coming here to collect or to discover? I wonder. What's she holding? Some sort of bag um, or canister. How long, what planet is this? Because this planet, again, it's not a desert planet, it seems now. But we see some grass and we see some water. I mean, really, this is the best you can do. If we're not having deserts or woods, we're just getting grass and water. That's what I mean. There's nothing fantastical about it anymore. Um, but anyway... Um, how long have the remains been here? You would think other people, other scavengers, other explorers, maybe archaeologists, some other people would have, um, you know, travelled here to look through the remains already. But, um, maybe not. Or maybe they have and they're not here to collect an object. Maybe they're here just to sense an evil an evil um, being. Um, this, I think, is taken from the original plot of the sequels because I remember reading or looking in the YouTube video what could the sequels have been, ideas for the first 
um, episode 7. And I remember reading in some concept art or concept book or something that they came up with and it was them going into the wreckage of the Death Star for some reason, I don't remember why, but it involved them um, which had crashed uh, in the sea. So it clearly looks like they've copied, they've reused that idea which they originally intended or were thinking about using for episode 7 and now they're using it in episode 9, the idea of the Death Star wreckage and them go having to go there to look for something. Now, I'm gone. No one's ever really gone. Um, I've, I've seen the red letter, me red letter media video making fun of no one's ever really gone so anyone can come back and no no uh, finale to anyone. Okay. Those words might of course, those words are used in reference in for the purpose in this trailer of um, the reveal of Darth Sidious. But I was thinking because these are the words that Luke said at the end of the Last Jedi to um, Leia, wasn't it? Before he went out to face Ben, didn't he say, "No one's ever really gone"? That's where that line's taken from, which didn't really make sense because then um, Leo was like, I know my son's gone or something, but maybe that's why he said it. But I don't remember the context exactly, but in, it's making me wonder whether Kylo is going to turn back to the light because that line all could mean in reference to Kylo, no one's ever really gone. Leia was, you know, defeated thinking that uh, her son Ben has forever um, given in to the dark side. But no one's ever really gone. Maybe it suggests that uh, he will come back to the light. Who knows? Well, someone does! You! I bet it's you. Um, but then... Sidious. Okay. Now, my first thought is... He probably isn't going to be in the movie alive if you've played uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 on PS4 or... Well, as I have, I think it's also on the Xbox, but... Sidious was in that, but as a sort of hologram. I mean, there was a moving sort of body. Wait, was the body moving? But his face was shown in some sort of screen. And I think it was like a pre-recorded uh, message. If it wasn't pre-recorded, I don't know what it was, but um, he sort of gave a final mission to his commanders uh, from the dead, even though he wasn't alive and he wasn't a, he wasn't a living being, but he was... I, I think he gave those orders whilst he was alive and then the message uh, was played to them afterwards. So it might be something like that here. Uh, where a message, previously recorded message is recorded, but I don't see why he would be laughing manically like that. But uh, maybe the laugh is just there for the trailer, just like Luke repeating that same line from The Last Jedi. Like they did with Force Awakens, he said lines from the original trilogy in that trailer. But then the possibility is that he is going to come back either in a body form or a spirit form of sorts. Uh, maybe there's a way to be a dark ghost, dark force ghost. Don't know why he wouldn't have thought uh, of how to come back in the last 20, 30 years, however long it's been. Because the Jedi came, the Jedi knew how to do it before they died, and then when they died they instantly could be force ghosts, uh, as far as I'm aware. Except from Vader. Vader never knew how to be a Force Ghost and he still became a Force Ghost. So I don't know what the canon is for that for that problem, but anyway. And he was oh, something about because he, re 
he was now he now redeemed himself so he could be a ghost, even though he didn't know how to become a ghost, as far as I'm aware. But anyway. If Sidious knew how to become a ghost before dying, surely he would have become one right away. I don't know. Unless he figured it out from the dead, but how do you do that? Um, I'm not... I'm conflicted because... I wanted to see Ian McDermott back as Sidious, but I wanted to see him back in Rogue One, while he was alive. That always baffled me about Rogue One because... They bring a guy back from the dead, the great actor, the great late um, Grand Moff Tarkin, I forgot his name, I apologize to you, but they bring a guy back to from the dead, they spend all that money CGI-ing uh, his face, when you've got, and then they leave out Darth Sidious, who was there at the time, and who would surely be very interested in the progress of his ultimate death weapon to control the universe and he was nowhere to be seen and he's uh, Ian McDermott the guy who plays Sidious the Emperor is very well known to be one of the best things about the prequels and Star Wars in general a great actor and they didn't use him you should use people while they are here you know uh, they go through all the effort to bring a guy back from the dead and they don't use the great talent that we have. So I'm of two minds about this because they should have used him in Rogue One. Not necessarily, you know, a massive part. Even if it was just a hologram, Tarkin talking to the hologram, maybe asking for permission to, you know, blow up a, a planet. Well, not the whole planet, but the city. He could have given him the go-ahead or he could have informed him on the progress or something. Um, but he wasn't used in that movie, and uh, now they're using him in episode 9, and it feels very forced in a way, if they're using him in that, in the way that we think they might. Um, I would, I remember people saying this movie, I think it was J.J. Abrams, is going to connect all of the saga together, the prequels and all the way through. And I thought it was going to be Plagueis. I really uh, actually like the idea of Snoke being Plagueis, because that really would have... That really would have linked everything together. Wouldn't it have been awesome if Plagueis was brought back to life instead? Or even as a, as, as a dark force ghost, rather than Sidious. Sidious had his end, we saw his end, and it was a... It was a great, you know, finale for him, it was a... The moment of great, um, it was the moment that changed everything. Vader picking him up and throwing him down that hole, even if it made no sense. But, you know, he, that was the perfect end to that arc, to that story. And now bringing him back is just a big sort of middle finger in a way. Well, the entire sequel sort of our big middle finger to the original, how that, how those ended. Um, but Plagueis would have been different because Plagueis would have connected to the prequels, Darth Plagueis the Wise. And you know, the story of him wanting to cheat death. Um, if seeing him come back from the, from, to life, would have proven that he could actually do it, that he actually did achieve something that Sidious could not and Vader could not. Uh, Vader couldn't say Padme. The reason, one of the reasons supposedly he turned dark was to save Padme. That was a main plot point for Anakin. And to see now Plagueis coming to life, it would have shown us that it actually was possible and seeing Seeing um, Ian McDermott, Palpatine, telling Anakin that story, knowing that years later, um, Plague has actually achieved, actually cheated death, it would have really made that, that scene um, even more um, chilling in, in that way. So it really would have been great. Maybe he is in this, maybe he is in the movie and they're not showing it. That would be wise not to show it, but... 
<laughs> Palpatine uh, and um, Plagueis um, reunion. I wonder how that's going to play out. Um, so yes, I'm I'm kind of happy to. I would again. I'm not sure he's going to be in the movie or how much if he's actually being brought to life. But I, if there's even any new lines for him, maybe it's just maybe we just hear his voice from the past. Like a vision or something. Uh, but I am happy to see Ian come back as Sidious. But I didn't want to see him come back in episode 9 in the sequels. I wanted to see him in Rogue One, basically. It would have been much more fitting and less forced. But I haven't yet seen how they're going to handle this. So I'm not sure how it's going to play out until I see the movie. So tell me your thoughts on this. Are you happy to see play, uh, to see Sidious return in episode 9? Or are you disappointed a bit? Do you feel it's forced? Do you feel uh, it doesn't fit? Do you feel he had um, a definite ending already that shouldn't have been reversed? If it has been reversed, uh, would you be happy to see him as a hologram? as a recording or as a vision. Tell me your thoughts, show me your crimes, and remember, remember your destiny and your crimes. Farewell, my moonshins take care of my moonshins. <laughs>